What's your name, your job, and your major? Uh, my name is Laura Peru, and I'm an associate professor of wildlife sciences at the University of Washington. Let's start off with an easy question. What's your favorite thing about your job? My favorite thing about being associate professor, I would say, is the um, the freedom that you have to pursue your own interests, like the, the intellectual things that you're most interested in. If you can convince someone to give you money to research that, uh, then you can do it. So I really like that aspect. And also you largely can set your own schedule. Uh, so there are some constraints with, you know, when you need to teach classes and such, but in general, there's just a lot of flexibility. You don't have you know, boss looking over you, making sure you're in the office from nine to five. Um, so yeah, I think the freedom and flexibility are two of the main, um, main benefits. And I also just really love interacting with students. Um, so you're always learning new things. Um, and, you know, the student are really inspiring. They have fresh ideas and it's just very satisfying to be uh, mentoring students and, and educating them. Have you always known that this was what you wanted to do since you were young? If so, tell me why. If not, tell me what major or minor events influence you to pursue this career. Yeah, I decided when I was about 10 that I wanted to be a wildlife biologist and the inspiration from that actually comes from television more than anything else. So I really loved nature documentaries. So at that time, I was really into Wild America and Jack Cousteau. Um, if I was growing up now, I'd probably be really into, you know, the David Attenborough doc BBC documentaries and such, which I do really enjoy. Um, so that really was kind of the inspiration and took me through. I didn't really have any inspiring biology teachers um, in uh, high school. I, and um, so I kind of persisted through that. And um, I didn't really settle on, I, I didn't really think about what exact job I wanted until I was towards the end of my PhD, actually. <laughs> um, and I kind of ended up going down the professor academic route sort of by default because I decided to do a, be a postdoctoral researcher after I got my PhD just to leave all of the options open and, um, and then ended up taking a faculty position and just found it was a really great fit for me. Do you consider your job repetitive? What usually happens in your typical workday? Oh, yeah, sometimes it's repetitive. There is a lot of busy work of, you know, I do spend a substantial amount of time doing things that I don't necessarily want to do. <laughs> but I think that's probably the case with most jobs. Um, so I spend a fair amount of time on emails um, and on my computer, but I do probably spend about a month a year in the field doing field work, and that's really great. Um, I'll usually go to a scientific conference once a year, which is also really inspiring and a great and also fun to spend time with my colleagues and work friends. Um, and, and then I'll spend time every week meeting with my students and having a lab meeting where we discuss the latest research and give them feedback on a, their projects. Uh, so kind of a, a mix, a lot of computer work um, and some busy work, just managing grants and doing paperwork for that that kind of thing. Um, some write, writing, some research. Um, yeah, and then a lot of interacting with students. 
In what ways does your job benefit society? Would you say that you help others? I do, yeah. I think one of the most um, rewarding things that I do is to teach an introductory wildlife biology class to non-majors because I think everybody should understand how what we do impacts wildlife and that is important for human society in a variety of ways, even if we might not realize it. Um, and so I think increasing awareness of the impacts that we have on wildlife and things that we can do to turn things around and improve, um, you know, our relationship with the natural world, I think definitely benefits uh, people. What do you think is the biggest misconception people have about what you do? Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure, but I would maybe think, well, one misconception about being a professor in general is that all you do is teach. And that that is true, maybe more true at small private universities where the real focus is on teaching, but at a larger universities like state colleges and universities, um, professors spend at least half of their time on research um, and then also te teach. So that's kind of one misconception. And then another one for wildlife professors is maybe people think we're all like Steve Irwin and going around wrestling alligators and um, things like that all day um, and might not realize that a lot of what we do involves like pretty complex math and statistics and so it can be very quantitative and involve a lot of work in front of your computer um, and we do still get out into the field and you know wrestle wildlife sometimes if we're capturing and radio collaring um but that's a pretty minor part of the job what was the most exciting experience that you've had while you were researching wildlife out in the field what are some unique experiences that your research has offered yeah i mean my fondest memories and uh, kind of experiences have been during the field um, especially when I was doing my research for my PhD, my dissertation work, where I was living in a remote area of Alaska for winter and summer for three and a half years. So it was like very intensive um, experience that even many Alaskans don't don't get to have. So that was very unique, um, and I had that you know, a lot of wildlife encounters and also just other experiences, like I had to learn how to repair a snowmobile and um, other survival skills like when you're out in a remote area. So it was also really kind of confidence building. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I, yeah, I would say that's, and whenever I get out and do field work, it's kind of similar. It's really energizing and confidence building and very rewarding. What are some challenges that you face with research, especially regarding accuracy and precision, and how does research differ from field to field? Yeah, it can be hard, and there's so much information out there. Um, the typical process, what, what we do is we aim to publish our findings in peer-reviewed journals with the idea, with the idea being that your research has to be evaluated by someone who wasn't involved in the study who's going to scrutinize it and kind of highlight if there's problems with it um and there's certainly problems with the peer review system like the quality of the review that you get really varies from person to person but I do think it's a really important um, vetting process. And every time I've gone through that process, I feel like the research has improved. Um, so that's one thing I look for is, is 
is this information based on a study that was published in a reputable peer-reviewed journal. Um, so that's that's one way that I sort of, if I see some information online, I kind of judge its quality. Um, but it's also important to, you know, read sometimes even if a research is published in a reputable peer-reviewed journal, there might still be problems with it that weren't weren't caught. So if it's something that's really relevant to my field, um, you know, I'll certainly want to take the time to read the paper myself with a critical view. That makes sense. Like um, in high school, um, since I'm doing like um IB, I have to make sure all my sources are peer reviewed and stuff. So mm -hmm. okay. yeah, and another a good tool because. You know, there's so many different studies on a given topic. Meta analyses, where people compile like all the different studies that have been done on a topic, and then kind of analyze that body of literature. I find those can be really helpful too in kind of seeing if there's a bigger trend when you compile all the evidence. And I think that is useful in pretty much every field of science. In your career journey, what are some lessons that you've learned? If you could do this all over again, is there anything you would change? If so, what? So lessons I've learned just in my yeah. journey in general. Yeah. Um, I think just like one of the important things is just I've been, I've learned the importance of persistence and that succeeding in my field is pretty much a series of problem solving. You're just confronted with a series of problems, whether they're navigating the bureaucracy of your university to, uh, or, you know, government permitting system to get your research done. So kind of practical problem solving to answering scientific questions. That's all about solving problems of understanding uh you know how the world works um and so kind of honing those problem solving skills and being persistent when you encounter a problem and it, it's just sometimes i felt like giving up or like oh he, you know i can't solve this problem um but i find uh always you know it just there's a way through it <laughs> um and so kind of pers learning how to just persist through problems is i think probably the you know most helpful thing you can do to succeed in really any any field um uh i actually don't think i would change anything about the way, you know, the path that I took. Um, I took a couple years after my undergraduate to just work as a field technician and gain experience and on different projects. And that helped me to find out what I was really interested in. Um, and then, you know, was fortunate to end up in a really good graduate program and kind of went from there. Finally, steering away from job-specific questions. In general, what are your biggest concerns about the job market in the future? <sighs> um, well, right now, um, you know, post-COVID, there you hear like a mix of, you know, difficulty finding people to fill positions. And yet there's still some persistent problems of unemployment. Um, and uh, in my field of wildlife, there isn't a lot of funding. And so having jobs that pay enough <laughs> to attract good people is, I think, an issue. Um, and, you know, there just isn't much, there isn't really any money to be made in the wildlife field, sort of commercially. Uh, so the jobs are either in government agencies, nonprofit organizations, or universities. And none of those 
pay as much as, you know, biotech companies that are making a lot of money or, um, you know, tech, tech companies and such. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess my biggest concern is whether we can kind of keep wages can kind of keep up and to where we can attract people, um, you know, from a variety of different backgrounds. And that's another issue is, is the wildlife field is very white. <laughs> and so, um, you know, attracting people from other backgrounds, other cultures uh, is I think really important. And we're still trying to learn, you know, kind of build, I think, a critical mass of leaders from other, you know, backgrounds and uh, are, are really helpful in showing students like, hey, I look like you and you can, this is, this is a field that you can succeed in. Um, and uh, so I'm hopeful that, that we're get there, but we still have a long ways to go.